Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective. Big, big day in Cowboys land. Looks like a lot of you got your wishes granted. Scott Linehan relieved of his duties, mutually parting ways. I don't know. He's gone. I'm thrilled about it. Uh, never thrilled to see somebody lose their job, especially somebody that's, you know, seems like a, a decent person. But thrilled for the future and where we're headed. Thrilled for the sense of urgency that the, the Jones family uh, seems to show not being content with you know, a uh, division round loss. Yes, we won eight out of our last 10 games and, and, you know, we made a little bit of a run, but not good enough. Not with the amount of time this coaching staff has been in place. Jason Garrett lives to fight another day for now. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. But when you look at what Scott Linehan was initially brought here for, to work with Tony Romo coming from Detroit and, and some of the things he did, he did some good things here. And look, Bill Callahan and him, you know, back in the day, they couldn't coexist. Once we moved from Tony Romo to Dak Prescott, obviously when Romo got hurt and, and Prescott took over and, and, and secured the job, we just never had the progression, the development that we thought uh, we, we would see for a young quarterback. We never saw that development plan. We didn't we didn't adjust with the times and we've fallen behind. Schematically, when, you, when teams look at what we're doing on film, despite the awesome personnel that we have on the offensive side of the ball, we've been average. Less than 22 points per game, you know, bottom five in red zone offense. We have a mobile, mobile quarterback, the league's leading rusher, uh, wide receivers like Amari Cooper, a tight end group that started to blossom, yet the productivity, the points, for whatever reason, don't come through. And this isn't a time to come on here and bash Dak, all you Dak haters. Some of y'all claim you're Cowboys fans, but you hate hate on the quarterback, you know, and all this type of stuff, and don't want to see how the sausage gets made, so to speak. And, and, and the reason why I say that is because it's a process with developing quarterbacks. And Scott Linehan, to me, was never interested in, in, in following this, this blueprint. He wanted to basically treat him like a like a cookie cutter type thing with like he, like he was Tony Romo instead of building around one's strengths, cultivating one's strengths, and 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 growing and, and developing those other parts uh, of our quarterback's game. How he treated the quarterback room and and Jason Garrett has a lot to do with that. He is hand in hand, especially as a former OC and quarterback himself. But you know what? He's a head coach. Obviously, he has a great relationship with the Jones family, and they're going to try to figure out. Uh, something else is as they're doing a self audit and they realize, hey, we look at the film, you know, we're not on the level of a Saints, a Rams, a Chiefs, even a Patriots. You look at those play callers that are going to be playing on or that are going to be coaching on Sunday, a Josh McDaniels, Eric B and me and, and, and Andy Reid, uh, you know, on the other side of the ball, Sean Payton, who. You know, there are rumors that we could be potentially pursuing him. By the way, if that's true, and I've, I've, I said early in the season, I don't know if anybody remembers that my ideal dream scenario as a, as you know, from a coaching perspective would be to pursue Sean Payton. I think, you know, he belongs in Dallas, quite frankly. He was obviously has history here with Bill Parcells. That would be my ideal pick. Realistically, I don't think it's going to happen. But if they lose on Sunday, I'd make the phone call. And I would tell Jason Garrett, thank you for your service right away. But, and then Sean McVay is the other one, right? Who who just, you know, destroyed us last weekend. So, Scott Linehan wasn't on the, was on the level of those guys. Let's just be honest. So, you got to, you got to, you got to take a look internally. Jason Garrett, do you want to take on that role as a play caller and then promote one of your one of the guys you already have that you guys maybe have been grooming behind the scenes or have relationships with from previous staffs. I heard some uh, ex guys that he's worked with on the dolphins or do we say, you know what, we're going to go with a youth movement and some of you are going to not like I'm going to say, but promote a Kellen Moore. Who's our currently our quarterback coach, real young guy. I think he's like 30 years old to being the, offensive coordinator and play caller and saying, hey, give us a fresh perspective here. I know you were a student of Scott Linehan and, and have been raised in this organization, but we feel with your family's background, coaching background, 
You can come in and give, you know, really, really have full say over this offense and the development of the quarterback and what needs to be done. I'm not really in favor of going that direction. Uh, one fa- one direction that does entice me is the marriage of maybe a, 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 a Doug Nussmeyer, maybe somebody else like we did last year, bringing in a Chris Richard um, to be like a passing game coordinator. But if you have a Doug Nussmeyer, who I think does deserves consideration for the job, he does have previous play call experience, albeit at the collegiate level at Alabama and Florida. Uh, his Florida job did not go well, got knocked down. Uh, he has risen, though with his work with the, our tight ends this year. You can make the argument he was one of the most productive position coaches on the team considering the talent at his position group and what he got out of it. So that's something that is promising married with his experience. Do you then go and, and maybe bring in somebody from the college ranks? You guys let me know what you're intrigued to see. I think uh, the most realistic scenario right now is that they promote somebody, one of those two guys, and the potential of Jason Garrett with him knowing he's on the hot seat, not because his team sucks, but because we're at the divisional stage. We keep getting stuck for many reasons, not just Scott Land. Scott Land is not the only reason why we've been stuck there the three times we've gotten there in the last five years. But Jason Garrett's now going to be the one being held accountable. I'm just seeing that just from the language and the tune of the Jones family. The, the tune seems to have been... Uh, you know, change a lot more cutthroat, to be frank with you guys. So what do you want? You know, from my 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 vantage point, I think I would go with Nussmeyer and, and, and maybe another outside consultant or somebody to come in. And I would also love, love, love to hire another uh, or to sign a veteran quarterback in the offseason as well. Just giving our quarterback as many tools as possible. And and look, the interview process for this thing, it, you need to have a four-point plan for Dak Prescott's development. The same thing we saw with Sean McVay and how he wooed the, the, the Rams organization when he was hired and his plan for Jared Goff. I need to see the same thing for Dak Prescott. We saw that with Chicago Bears and Matt Nagy. That was a big reason why Matt Nagy got that job and how he was going to make Mitchell Trubisky as productive as possible. Are these guys perfect quarterbacks? No. Do they still miss throws? Yes. But they're both in offenses that generate points and are and are efficient in the red zone and take advantage of their strengths as quarterbacks. Who can get me the best from Dak Prescott? What will Dak Friendly 2.0 now, because 1.0 is now gone. What will Dak Friendly 2.0 look like? You guys let me know in the comments what you think. We'll obviously be back here and react once, you know, news breaks of who we name or bring in what have you. Uh, But we have other content that we'll have released this week. A lot of sports news going on that I want to touch on and share my thoughts. Big boxing match on Saturday night. Manny Pacquiao, even Broner. So a lot, lot, lot to go into, guys, uh, as well as Championship Sunday. So uh, excited to talk with you guys always. We're almost at 3,000 subs already. Already. So really thankful for you guys. Appreciate it as always. See you soon.